Ladies and gentlemen, let's start this off with the latest on Garrett Crochet, the top trade candidate in this year's offseason. Now, White Sox GM Chris Getz was talking with Bruce Levine of 670 to the score, saying he wants to get position players back in any trade for Garrett Crochet, which makes a lot of sense. They lack impact bats in that system. Sure, you got Colson Montgomery. He was a high draft pick not too long ago, but he struggled a lot this past year. He did heat up in the final month of the season, but who knows what he's going to be looking like moving forward. You got someone like Edgar Quero there should be a solid catcher down the road, but he's not really an impact kind of a bat. They need some more bats in that system. They got some pretty good pitching. You got Noah Schultz, one of the top prospects in all of Major League Baseball. You got Hagen Smith, one of the top pitchers coming out of this year's draft out of Arkansas, but they need to add some bats. Now, one team that I think are going to be a real threat for Garrett Crochet are the Mets, and they are showing interest in Crochet. Could you imagine adding Crochet alongside Kadai Senga? That would be a very good one-two punch. And the Mets are losing a lot of pitching to free agency this year. Sean Manaya, Luis Severino, Jose Quintana. So yeah, they could definitely use someone like Crochet. And the one good thing about Crochet is he's not going to cost a whole lot of money. He's a free agent in a couple of years, but he's still in his arbitration years. So you could save a good amount of cash and use that to go land someone like Corbin Burns out there, maybe someone like Max Freed. Could you imagine a one through three of Senga, Burns, Crochet? I mean, that is just ridiculous if you ask me. Now, I think my Red Sox are also going to be a threat for Garrett Crochet, and Sean McAdam is saying here that the Red Sox are right in the thick of things. Now, with the Red Sox starting pitching this year, they did exceed expectations. They got a lot of help from Andrew Bailey, new pitching coach this year, and they got a lot of good results. Tanner Houck had a breakout year, but you had a couple of guys that didn't quite take that step forward they were looking for. Brian Bayo, a uh, very promising young righty for the Red Sox, but you know he had some good moments this year, but just didn't quite take that step forward. So let's see what he can do for next year. Cutter Crawford showed a lot of good things this year, but he got hit bit a lot by the home run ball. Nick Pavetta, uh, who knows if he comes back to the Red Sox. They did offer him the qualifying offer, but I do expect him to go after a multi-year deal. That's just what I'm thinking, at least. But in the end, though, no matter if he comes back or not, the Red Sox are going to have to upgrade the top of the rotation. Tanner Houck, sure, he was good this year, but in my opinion, he looked more like a number two two in the rotation. I think like someone like Garrett Crochet would make a lot of sense here. A one-two punch of Crochet and Hauk, I think, would be great. Now, Bob Nightingale is also reporting here that the Phillies and the Dodgers are very aggressive for Garrett Crochet. Now, the Phillies, they fell short again this year. Could you imagine them adding Crochet to this rotation? You would have Wheeler, Nola, and Crochet, along with Sanchez and Suarez. Are you kidding me? I mean, that is just a beefy rotation. I would have wanted to go up against that starting pitching. And of course, the Dodgers are always going to be in the thick of things. They were interested in Crochet at the deadline. I guess one holdup was that the White Sox wanted Dalton rushing, but the Dodgers did not want to part with him. So who knows what those talks would look like this offseason. You know, maybe you could revisit that. But again, if you didn't want to give up Dalton rushing at that time, I don't see the Dodgers wanting to give him up now. So maybe they could do something with someone like Jose DePaula. I'm not quite sure. You know, but taking a look here, you know, when it comes to the Red Sox, you know, they could definitely work out a deal here. Now, I don't expect them to part with Roman Anthony. He's the number one prospect in all of Major League Baseball, according to baseball. Baseball America. Now, Marcelo Meyer, I think, could be an intriguing trade candidate here. They got a lot of middle infield depth. Yes, he is very good, and he's one of the top prospects in all of Major League Baseball, but you got someone like Trevor Story for the next few years. You got some other guys in this system as well. So I think Marcelo Meyer could be expendable, and with his good value, can definitely land someone out there. I think it's also arguable that Marcelo Meyer might actually have more value than Garrett Crochet. So I'm not sure if you do a trade with him. Maybe someone like Christian Campbell, he exploded this year for the Red Sox, was minor league player of the year, according to Keith Law. He had a fantastic year. Kyle Teal, I expect them to hang on to. You know, good catchers are hard to come by. So maybe the Red Sox, you know, in the maybe you could do something with Christian Campbell, or maybe you could do something with Willie Bray, who's got five more years of control, had a solid rookie season this year. Maybe you could do a pass 
package with him. Someone like Franklin Arias. You got Uwelyn Cespedes here. You got a couple other guys down the pipe like Chase Majroth as well. Someone like Mikey Romero was pretty good this year. So I think the Red Sox can definitely work something out. Uh, like I mentioned with the Mets earlier, they got some pretty solid position players as well. Jet Williams, Drew Gilbert, Ryan Clifford here. So you got a few guys you could work a package around. Now the Phillies, they got a couple of guys as well. You know, someone like Aiden Miller, would the Phillies want to part with him? I'm not quite sure, but he could definitely be the centerpiece of a package. Someone like Justin Crawford should be an everyday center fielder down the road. I think he would be a good piece. Someone like Starlin Kaba as well. And like I mentioned with the Dodgers, you got someone like Dalton rushing, but would they want to part with him after not wanting to part with him at the deadline? Jose DePaula could be a good centerpiece. Maybe throw in uh, Alex Freeland here. He had a good year in the minor leagues. Whatever it is, uh, I expect these rumors for Garrett Crochet to continue to heat up. Next up, let's talk some Nolan Arenado and Derek Gould of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch was writing here that neither Wilson Contreras or Sonny Gray are really willing to waive their no-trade clause, at least as of right now. But Nolan Arenado would be game. It goes on to say here that the Cardinals will spend the next couple of weeks gauging which teams have interest in Arenado and getting a feel for what might be available in a trade. Now, reports of this offseason are saying that the Cardinals are looking to cut some payroll. They got a lot of it on here with just a few players, right? You got Nolan Arenado making $32 million this year, Sonny Gray at 25, Miles Michaelis at 17.6, Wilson Contreras at 18. So yeah, they got a bit of payroll here. If you were to find a way to unload Arenado and his salary for the next few years, that would be a huge lift on this payroll, making $32 million this year, $27 million next year. It does go down to $15 million in 2027. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Now, there is a bit of a concern with Nolan Arenado when it comes to the bat. Now, taking a look at the numbers here, hit 272 this year, a 325 on base, only a 394 on the slugging, a 102 WRC plus right around league average. Now, Arenado is still one of the best defenders in all of Major League Baseball. He's been one of the best defenders in all of Major League Baseball for quite some time now. So we're not really concerned about the glove, but the bat has slowly been degrading over the last few years. 34 home runs in 2021, down to 30 in 2022. He had a very good offensive season that year, but they dipped again in 2023 to 26. And then this year to 16. I mean, my goodness, I mean, he posted a 149 WRC plus in 2022, and he's been right around league average for the last couple of years. So Arenado, yeah, there is a bit of concern when it comes to the bat. Now he's still a very patient hitter. Doesn't really strike out all that much. He was still in the top, in the top 10% this year when it came to K percentage and almost in the top 10% when it came to whiff percentage. Now the walks were, you know, not so great with him this year. The on base went down a little bit to 325 this year, but Arenado for the most part still a very patient hitter up there he just needs to find a way to get the bat going and I wonder if a team like the Astros could be a good fit for him they got the short porch there in left field in Houston I think maybe that could help him out when it comes to the power a little bit and hey they're gonna need a third baseman if Alex Bregman ends up leaving town I think that could be a pretty good fit they're still in a competitive window I think Arenado being in Houston for three years I think that could actually be a good fit time wise we'll just have to wait and see now my Red Sox, I think, could be very interesting. Now, Rafael Devers is the third baseman in Boston, but Devers in the defense has not been good for a while now. Rafael Devers is one of the worst defenders at third base going back to 2022. Actually, if you take a look at all the third basemen that have played 2,000 innings at third base going back to 2022, he is statistically the worst defender at third. So possibly, maybe you could move Devers to more of a DH role. Uh, I think, you know, maybe play some third base here and there. I think that could make some sense. But I think Devers, you're paying the guy for the bat at this point. That's where the value lies with Rafael Devers. I think if you move him to DH, Arenado into third base, and with the green monster there, he's more of a pull hitter. I think that would be a very good fit. And the Red Sox could really use an improvement in the infield defense. I think he would be a pretty good fit here. They do need a right-handed bat. Now, maybe the Yankees here, you know, with the Yankees, who knows what happens with Juan Soto. I'm not saying Arenado is going to replace the offensive production of Juan Soto, but you could use someone at third base. Now, Jazz Chisholm was playing third for the Yankees a lot in the second half and in the postseason, but Jazz is a better fit at either second or center field. DJ LeMayhew, I mean, at this point, you got to put DJ LeMayhew at first base. The guy's been having a lot of lower half injuries. I think you need to keep him at first. So third base, if you could add someone like Arenado, get some great defense there, maybe the Yankees can get something going with the bat. I think he could be a pretty good fit. Overall, though, 
I do expect Arenado to get traded this offseason. Would not be surprised to see some of this heating up here over the next few weeks. Let's talk a little Max Freed and Ben Nicholson Smith of Sportsnet is saying that the Blue Jays have some interest in Max Freed along with John Heyman, who also links the Orioles and the Red Sox to Freed. Now, I already talked about Garrett Crochet with the Red Sox. Same thing here. Max Freed would definitely be an upgrade for the Red Sox rotation. I think a one-two punch of how can Freed would be very solid. Now, I think Garrett Crochet is going to be the first target for the Red Sox because he's not going to cost the money that Max Freed is going to cost. So if they strike out on Garrett Crochet, no pun intended there, I definitely think they could turn to Max Freed. Now, the only question there is whether or not the owner of the Red Sox, John Henry, will sign off on a long-term deal for a pitcher. He usually doesn't like to sign off on long-term deals for pitchers, minus David Price, who really the only reason they brought him in was because they didn't bring back John Lester and they needed something else at the top of the rotation. And in the end, you know, sure, David Price helped them win a World Series, but overall that contract was not very good. So will he have a change of heart with someone like Max Fareed? I'm not so sure. They do need something at the top of this rotation. So look out for that. Now, I find the Orioles very interesting. Remember, Corbin Burns uh, just had a very good season with the Orioles, but he's a free agent. He's going to be highly sought after. He's going to cost a lot of money. Are the Orioles going to bring him back? I don't know. But if you don't bring him back, you could turn to someone like Freed, who is going to be a bit cheaper, probably 24, 25, you know, maybe $26 million per year. The Orioles, they got some new ownership there now. It looks like they might be willing to spend some big bucks. We'll see uh, if Corbin Burns is too expensive. I could definitely see them pivoting to someone like Max Freed, and I think this would be a really solid combination at the top. Freed, Eflin, and Grayson Rodriguez. That's really solid, if you ask me. And you got some depth here with Kramer, Suarez, and Rogers. So that would give the Orioles some very good starting pitching. Now, the Blue Jays, I find very interesting. I think they need some bats in that lineup. Their starting pitching has actually been pretty solid for the most part over the last few years but adding someone like Freed a lefty I think would give them a different look here and again like I said with the Orioles a very good combination at the top Kevin Gosman Max Freed and Jose Barrios I think that's really solid there so again I think the Blue Jays they need to do a lot of things this offseason but adding someone like Freed definitely would have not hurt uh max freed we'll see now i wonder you know is corbin burns going to be the first domino to fall and then teams turn to max freed i'm not so sure how it works out but freed because he is going to be cheaper than burns i definitely think there's going to be a lot of interest for him out there now with max freed one rumor that seems to be lingering out there is that he wants to go to the west coast we'll see i wonder you know when it comes to teams on the west coast sure the dodgers they could definitely give him some money if they want to but they already have so so much pitching there do they want to spend even more money on starting pitching especially with a guy going into his 30s here I don't know when it comes to a team like the Padres right you know they've had some budget concerns over the last couple of years now will they want to pay big bucks you know could you see the Giants but reports are recently that they're looking to reduce some payroll the Angels uh sure yeah maybe I mean they're looking to get better of course always but they never really seem to get better in the end uh but will Freed want to go to the Angels I'm not so sure now I could see Freed wanting to go to the West Coast but will teams out there be willing to give him a big contract that's what I'm not so sure of so I'm not surprised to see these teams over here in the east uh, show some interest so we'll just have to wait and see how this turns out let's wrap this up with Roki Sasaki I don't know if you know him or not he is pretty good actually he's one of the best pitchers on the entire freaking planet and his team in Japan the Marines has agreed to post him and it was widely speculated whether or not they would post him this offseason or if they would wait until he was 25 years old and had the six seasons of playing time that are required to get posted the normal way to come over to Major League Baseball. But because he's only 23 years old and he's only played four seasons in Japan, he's going to be subjected to the international bonus pool, meaning that he's going to be getting a minor league contract and then he'll get promoted to a Major League team at the start of the season. But Roki Sasaki, he is absolutely the real deal. The stuff is off the charts. The velo is off the charts. And this guy is just going to be an absolute freak in Major League Baseball. Now, everyone has, uh, it seems like everyone has, has pretty much agreed that Roki Sasaki is destined to go to the Dodgers. Why? Because you got Otani, you got Yamamoto. They just won a World Series. They're in contention every single year. Their player development is just so good there. They got everything going for them over in LA. But most of all, you got Otani and you got Yamamoto. So why not just 
have Sasaki come over there as well. However, uh, Dennis Lynn of The Athletic here is saying that the Padres perhaps could be a threat for Roki Sasaki. And he mentioned here the good relationship between Yu Darvish and Roki Sasaki, along with AJ Preller and how he handled Yu Darvish going on the restricted list this past season because of a private family matter. And actually, Yu Darvish's agent was highly respectful of how AJ Preller handled this. He went on to say here that uh, throughout all of this, he was always there for Darvish every day if you ever needed him, whether it was a face-to-face or on the phone. And the one thing that came through that I realized early on is he knows Darvish much better than anyone in baseball. So he is talking about Joel Wolf, uh, the agent for you, Darvish, who is also expected to be the agent for Roki Sasaki. So Dennis Lynn is speculating whether or not that could come into play. Roki Sasaki and you, Darvish, are very close. So let's see if maybe the Padres could be a threat. AJ Preller has made it known he wants to go after Roki Sasaki. So I wonder if the Padres could uh, maybe get one up here on the Dodgers. We'll just have to wait and see. But everyone, uh, that's the news here for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. You know, what do you think of all these stories we talked about? What do you think about Garrett Crochet, Max Fried, Roki Sasaki, Nolan Arenado? Let me know all of your thoughts. But everyone, that's all I got for this video. If you can on the way out, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll talk to you next time.